In November 1942, U.S. Army Rangers launched an attack against Axis forces in North Africa. Their mission, which was codenamed Operation Torch, was to push the Germans out of Africa and take control of the cities of Casablanca, Oran, and Algiers. The Rangers' success was the first victory for U.S. forces in World War II, and it gave the Allies a strong foothold on the Mediterranean Sea, from which they would later be able to launch successful attacks across Italy, pushing their way to Berlin. And the very next year, in 1943, J.S. Publishing commemorated the events with this puzzle. Hi, I'm Dan and this is Puzzle File. Today I'm doing a quick video to show you one of the most interesting puzzles in my collection. This is Rangers Landing in Africa from JS Publishing's Victory series. I bought this puzzle a few months ago in an antique store. It's 80 years old, so it's easily the oldest puzzle that I own. I find it so interesting that this puzzle came out in 1943 and it's depicting events that had happened just months before in November 1942. It just shows you how much, at that time, developments in the war were very present in the American imagination. These days, at least in the U.S., we kind of go about our business mostly unaware and unaffected by what our military is doing overseas. But in 1943, the war was on the forefront of everybody's minds. The war was changing daily life for Americans at home, and people would have been following the news very closely. Puzzles like this one depicting scenes from the war were really popular with young people at the time. Cardboard toys in general were having a moment during World War II. That was partly because they were inexpensive, but also because cardboard was still readily available on the home front, whereas a lot of other materials were needed for the war effort. So you had a lot of cardboard toys being produced at the time, a lot of jigsaw puzzles, and a lot of puzzles depicting the ongoing conflict in Europe. So the Victory series is definitely not the only example of this trend, but when you look at these puzzles, I think they're very well designed. Let me just say, war and weapons are not at all my jam. I would not normally gravitate to these kinds of images. But if you ignore the content of these pictures, the composition and the colors and the style, I think these are really cool puzzles. So let's take a closer look at the box, and then I'll show you what puzzle pieces looked like in 1943. Okay, how great is this? Now, as I said, this is 80 years old, so you can definitely see a lot of wear and tear on it. We've got scratches on the front, it's all worn at the edges, but the box is pretty well intact, so I'm hoping all the pieces are inside. Up in the corner, you can see it's from the Victory Series Picture Puzzle, over 500 interlocking pieces, and the title here is Rangers Landing in Africa. Down at the bottom, we've got a copyright date, 1943, JS Publishing Corp. NYC, made in USA. The sides of the box just have the same information again. I just love this 1940s graphic design, so cool. All right, let's open it up. I try to be real careful with these pieces because they are more than twice my age. So you can see the paper front is cracking a little at the edges, but mostly these look really good. They are a nice sturdy cardboard, so even some of these really delicate little details on them have held up nicely. The colors seem kind of faded. The quality of the printing is maybe a little blurry, but overall I think these look awesome. The piece cuts are pretty interesting, but the most interesting thing is that there are shaped pieces, which you don't usually see in a cardboard puzzle. Okay, I'm gonna pour this out so carefully. I'm not exactly sure how hard or easy I think this is going to be. The picture is a little fuzzy, the colors are all really similar across the whole image, but there are a lot of different shapes and textures. 
And even the background has these great stripes of blue and green. So it gives you a lot to work with. I don't think this will be too bad. Here's what I'm planning for the initial sort. I'm gonna sort out the shaped pieces. I'm gonna sort out the edge pieces. And I'm also gonna go ahead and separate out all the pieces that have red and orange on them. I think that'll give me a good place to start. Okay, so I kind of took my time doing the sorting because I wanted to be real careful with these old pieces. Right here I've got all of the shaped pieces. There's eight of them. The bomb one is a little disturbing, but these are fun. Up here are all the pieces that have red on them. And on this tray is all the edge pieces. I think we've got some false edges in here. This looks like it's maybe too many pieces. I've separated out this handful of pieces because I think these are from a different puzzle. It's hard to tell because the colors kind of match, but these are all a little bigger in size and the cardboard feels thicker on them. So I'm not 100% sure, but I think these might belong to a different puzzle. This is our slush pile of blues and greens. That looks a little intimidating, but I'm hoping there's enough variety in these pieces. I mean, there's definitely different shades of blue and green. And then up here, I've separated out. Some of the pieces have split. The front of them is peeled off of the cardboard. And these ones are just paper that must have peeled off of the back of some of the pieces. So I'm not too worried about these, but these eight pieces I wanna fix before we move on. Okay, so I've laid everything out on a sheet of paper and I'm just gonna hit it with some spray adhesive. Okay, looking good. I did a good deed. This has been pretty tricky, but I'm starting to build some momentum now. I was surprised at how tightly the pieces fit. It's a nice snug fit with the pieces, except that there's a lot of push fit connections. So especially at the beginning, anytime I would add a piece, it would knock a bunch of things out of place. But the more pieces I get in, the more the puzzle is holding together. One of the things making this so tricky is that I think I am missing pieces. You never really know until you get to the end because sometimes a piece that you swore was not there suddenly turns up. But I've got a good handful of pieces now that I'm looking for and not seeing. Some of them might turn up, but I don't think they all will. Also, we know that this person wasn't very careful with their puzzles because I have pieces from other puzzles in here. I actually found another big section of pieces that looks like it's from a different puzzle. So sorting through all of that stuff slows me down a bit. I actually haven't really worked on the red pieces yet, which is where I thought I was gonna be starting. So I think that's what I'm gonna work on next. <laughs>
a cool experience. As I said, this is the oldest puzzle I have. It's the oldest puzzle I've ever done. Really amazing to get to interact with a little piece of history like this. As I thought, it is missing pieces. Looks like maybe 18 missing pieces, including one that looks like it was in the shape of a gun. But the box also came with 17 extra pieces from other puzzles. It looks like they're pieces from maybe three other puzzles from the same era. If anyone's looking for them, let me know. So it's got missing pieces. It had a bunch of pieces with little bits broken off as well. It's looking faded and beat up, but honestly for 80 years old, I think it's looking pretty great. Again, I really enjoyed this. My final time on this was just under five hours. That's a pretty long time for a 500 piece puzzle, but I was just working through it slowly, trying not to damage any pieces as I was putting them together and just enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed getting to see it and getting to learn a little bit about the history with me. If you're not already subscribed, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button before you go. I've got new jigsaw puzzle videos coming all the time. Right now, I'm gonna get back to puzzling and I'll catch you all next time.